Okay, it looks like it's recording upside down, but I think I can deal with that. I've got an hour and a half of memory, so we should be able to get on here. I am printing a special part that requires high heat, and I'm going to be keeping an eye on that, so if I jump up and yell, just ignore that, and I'll come back and explain what's going on. Yesterday we had my friend Steve's engine, and I've determined um, it's too good to do what I do, uh, in my opinion. Now, he can override me, and I'll do what he asks, but for the time being, uh, I'm going to go to what I call Plan B. Uh, and Plan B is an engine that really looks like something I would want to explore and refine and give the works to. And, and what I have here is what I call barter bait. I received this as part of a trade for something else. Sight unseen, I agreed to some value. And I'm always screwed on these deals, but I, I like the adventure, you know. Uh, <laughs> don't tell Margaret. At any rate, um, this engine is really, really dirty. I mean, it is. It is caked in dust and dirt. Just caked in dust and dirt. Not so much grease and grime, just dust and dirt. But I'm sure once we get into it, it's going to be dirt. I mean, grease. So I'm going to walk through this engine. Right, I take notes on what I find. Um, and, and then I've found a body. It needs a whistle and a horn metal, but this is a 302 body. It's plastic. It's in good shape. It has no damages. I had uh, played with it a little bit. It's missing some material here and it's missing one of the side pieces, but I can take care of that. And I'd already test fit one of my favorite things. I'd get it, in the, get it in the light so you can see it. My favorite things is the firebox. I've already test fit the firebox, so I'm ahead of the game on that. But what I've learned is uh, 302s came out, I think it was 48, 49. Um, and they were fairly robust. Uh, they had smoke in the tender and, uh, and um, metal. And uh, then I learned in 51 to 53, they went to the plastic body and the smoke in the boiler. And there was a choice of a plastic tender or a tin tender. And I have examples of both that I'll share with you. Right now, what I have picked out to, just to think about going with this would be a um, plastic tender shell and, uh, and chassis with a plastic body. Um, I don't think I'm giving my guy, uh, Steve, a bad deal. He, he's not paying for this. He's a friend, so um, I'm giving him something he doesn't have, and I think this, is for me, is an excellent project because it's it's a real dirt bag project. Uh, it's going to take a lot to uh, make it right. Uh, it looks like the wheels are off, the, everything's bent, uh, some of the linkage is missing, um, and, and, and it's just filthy. I, I can see here, i show you right now, look, there's a crack in the, in the field. Th this brush holder is toast, can't use it. This field has a big wedge in it, like it's been heat shrunk or something and just it's no good um, so this is unusable this is unusable and we haven't even gotten to the smoke yet but we're pretty sure we always replace the smoke because we have a three uh, a printed PC board we use let me see if I have Here's the PC board that we put in place of the uh, this smoke, and we put a little bit of electronics out here that gives it something. So I have no trouble doing that to this engine. Uh, this is broken. This is broken. So when we talk about changing it. I feel okay about it. Now this guy, I never feel bad about getting rid of these things. They are um, bane to reliable operations, in my opinion. Um, I've only had a few that actually worked reasonably well, and and they're always uh, problematic. So my goal is going to be to get rid of that, 
uh, get rid of this. Well, I may or may not, but I'll probably get rid of this weight. I'll show you why in a second. Um, and then uh, refurbish this and, and do what we do. And I, I can show you kind of the options for doing that. Uh, and I'll do that here briefly. Uh, there's a chassis that I had started, which was very similar. Okay, well, it's a Pacific, but you know what I mean. It has the smoke and the gear. And what I did was I put in a DC converted field set. So I have brand new fields and full of magnets now. Remember the uh, Flyer DC motor had magnets? These magnets are probably five to eight times stronger, okay? So big difference there. And um, it's the brush holder and, um, and, and, and then the smoke. And so it's pretty straightforward. We do have this PC board for this smoke, so I can plug this in and, and have a really nice balanced smoke system for him. And uh, this is one option. Uh, the second option is a little different, is um, we go ahead with our, um, we go ahead with our um, Magna Rosa. Now this is a magnet. I don't know if you can watch this or not, but that's a magnet, okay? Uh, brushes, magnet, we have a little limit switch right here which hits on one of these cams. This is a cam, we designed this uh, and uh, it triggers, uh, right now it's designed for two puffs and chuffs per rev and in this case we're using a 3D printed smoke instead of the flyer smoke. When, when I get an engine that's missing uh, the smoke altogether. Sometimes it's hard for me to find them. And the other advantage is um, this one I can create timing with it and I can do one or two or three chuffs per rotation if I want. This one is one chuff per rotation period. That's all this guy can do. It's just the mechanical. I've tried, I've done gearing for it, I've changed it, I've gotten two and I've gotten four. It's a real mess. It's very hard to do. Um, so if I stick with the smoke, uh, I'm, I won't have this gear. I'll have this gear here, and I'll come up with a different sensor. I'll probably use the Esta Rosa, excuse me, the Magna Rosa uh, for the fields, because these fields are broken, and I'm going to have to go find another set of uh, brush holders, because this one is broken. Then. Um, I'll run with his smoke and I'll may try to put a little magnet on here that will trigger as it comes up across the top. So one time per revolution it comes across the top and that would give me a pulse or a signal for digital sound. Okay, big word, let's back up. So we're probably going to go with the red digital uh, DC fields without the gear. And um, on the tender, we're not going to have this reverse. My, my choice for reverse is digital reverse like this. Uh, this is the, um, this is a replica or reincarnation of the Lionel um, digital reverse. We've redesigned it. We've added much beefier components, much stronger capability and it's a, a lot more reliable. So that gives you forward, neutral, reverse, neutral, just like off the track power, right? Just like the Lionel, uh, and it's reliable. In order to use this, however, it needs AC input. So we have an AC to DC rectifier that we've designed, and it'll fit in here like this. There'll be a little plastic standoff to hold it up, and it'll have some sockets in here that we can then plug this into various boards, and then, we have a couple of things else. <laughs> we have what's called a, a um, voltage regulator. This is a variable voltage regulator. In this case, it can raise or lower voltage both. So if you want six volts, you set it to six volts, you turn on the power and you got five volts, it'll bump it up to six. You got 10 or 12 volts, it'll boot, bu bucket back down to six. It'll maintain that constant voltage that we need so that we can run our digital sound. The digital sound board is um, new to us. Well, I mean, we've been working on it for over a year now, uh, but it's new to most everybody else. But this is a PC 
it's a mini processor. This is an amplifier, and on here are sounds and logic, both. So this is part of why we have to have this guy to give this fellow here his nice smooth power that he needs, and also to uh, get, get the power off of this switch come over here. So now we're going to get some electronics, some voltage regulation, AC to DC conversion, and it all fits on this piece. But then what do you do with this? Well, typically, typically, I'll just take it down to nothing, and this bolts onto it, and then the chassis bolts on over that. The body then bolts on over that. So this is what we call our uh, tender adapter. And we print that, fly it across the table, print that, and uh, assemble our electronics to it, and then it bolts onto this. Then this chassis, as you know, there's some variations. This is the bare one. This is the one with the uh, knuckle, which I'm sure Steve's gonna like the knuckle. And this is the uh, late, later model 55. 57. Uh, so we can look at that. And then we have other stages of it. This was with the, the link. And uh, I have a couple of others. But, but I also have my prototype <laughs> from my all wheel pickup testing. And I really like, I don't like this, but I like the effect that I give it so that you now have an insulated truck house with the side frames, vintage side frames, that screw in and you now have an, an axle that is isolated in the middle and each wheel is metal, every wheel is metal and the energy is, goes to the wheel, to the axle, to this wire, to this wire and up to my bolt converter. So, Right hand side, left hand side, all that energy comes up, goes into this rectifier, it's AC and it comes out DC, and then you can feed DC to your digital stuff. This is something that we've been working on quite a while, and we've made good progress. Now this is one of my earliest fully functional prototypes, so this is not how this thing ends up. It's a different design, but the same idea. It can uh, bolt to the existing chassis like this one did. Or I have another method. I brought it. Oh yeah, it's over here. Well, it's, it was over there. Ah. That's odd. I must have left it on this on my little thing where I was working. I have, this is the adapter like I talked about, but I have another piece of plastic. Ah. Alright, just hold the phone. Ah, oh, well, I will, I'll have to find it later and show you, but what it is in a nutshell, it is, it's this part with these features all molded into it and the holes for the wheels all molded into it. Oh, hell. <laughs> I was so silly, I put this on it and then I buried it and then I didn't know what I had. Okay, so, okay, two ways to go, right? We can give this adapter that bolts on and it can bolt on either or. Um, so as you see here, I have magnets everywhere. Uh, this can bolt on to the common chassis. If it was right side up, it could. It bolts onto the common chassis, like that, and everything goes together. Or it can bolt onto the tin chassis, which has the slots, and the tender would fit over that. Then the next thing we did was we actually created this 
is a complete, really stiff pole chassis that bolts on and holds the wheels and this and everything together and then it has trucks underneath and the trucks would be my uh, all-wheel pickup trucks. Let me see if I have partial or something here. And I don't, but I can show you something quickly. Okay, here we go. Here's the bits. Here's a, that's an older one. Oh, look at that. This is sort of the frame of what this thing is. And there's in, threaded inserts there. And it would screw in here. This one would screw in this way. So you'll now have a completely plastic tender. And these articulate the littlest bit. And we'll have the wheels and the axle going across with the insulator and the wires that pick up the power and then bring the wire up to the truck. And I've built several of these. I've had them delivered to customers. And no one has called me up screaming yet. Um, they seem to enjoy it. It gives them better reliability. You don't have the flickering. You don't have the halting, the stopping of action, going to reverse all of a sudden, stuff like that. It's very reliable power pickup. So I'm thinking for Steve's surprise engine, this and this rebuilt with this um, magnetic um, field, Magna Rosa. Oh, and the uh, smoke controller board. So we're at, oh, and the firebox, right? And maybe the trucks. Why not? So we're starting to feel like we're building a next generation S gauge engine in a way with use of this vintage smoke but with digital control. That's it. That's where I think I'm going to go with this project. And um, I'm going to do that as much as I can in video and post it so you guys see how it's done. And maybe that would interest you in doing something like that yourself using these parts, maybe. Okay, so that's where I think I'm going to end it. Uh, I'm not going to end it, I'm going to start it. I'm gonna, in that introduction, what we're going to do, I think in my mind, that's what I want to do. Until I see something that changes it, I'm going to go ahead with that. Now, I've got my notepad right here. This is a 302. It's a 51 to 53. We're going to give it Probably the plastic, because it bolts right on. Uh, plastic tender and smoke in boiler. And we're going to give an assessment of the engine right now. Here we go. First thing we're going to have to do is pop this off and dig into that engine. So pull this out if you can. Just it just pulls right off. That has a nice spring in it anyway. There's a brush in there. There's no brush in there. Um, but we can't get to it. Let's just swill that around. This brush, this wire is missing. This thing had been through something. I'm not sure what. <laughs> it definitely, I don't know you can see it. dirt on here. It's just really awful. Let's see if I can get it apart. Well, that's a good start. The screw over here. You know, one thing, if it was dropped and whacked right in there, I hope I didn't, this didn't bend anything in this engine. There's one thing I fear the most in these really old ones is something bent that you cannot straighten. Well, that feels pretty good. Oh, see? Can you see that? I told you it was broke. Whoa! You know why it's broken? Because that, that pin held it in and 
it wanted to go up and it couldn't. Ooh, bad deal. Now this is uh, this is the cork, not the cork, but the little fuzz that holds the oil. It is full of dirt. Oh, there's a brush. Well, the brushes are pretty long, pretty good, not too bad. This engine has been stored with not a lot of use. That's interesting. That's interesting. Now, the other thing that I see here is it has this spacer and it has this offset brush holder. So this bushing back here has to be really good shape and in good condition. You gotta clean those and clean that. You gotta be careful here. Look at this, it's like totally black. I don't know if you can see it or not, it's totally black. <laughs> I'm gonna have to have to get something on that right away. That just makes you crazy. Gives you the willies. And a few other things. Let's see if any of this will come off. Oh yeah, it comes right off, as usual. And, and what this shows me, and I hope it shows you, this is a good engine. This is an old set-aside engine. Look at those plates. Get one of my tiny screwdrivers. No crud, hardly any crud built up between. Uh, meters a lot. They're not expensive. I get mine at Sears and I like to know what I've got here. And I use these clips because I can't hold things very steady anymore. And um, I'm sure you can't see this, but if you could, you would be seeing the, boat, the uh, ohms jumping all over the place. Let's try to get a better grip. went to 1.7 and then stopped. I'm betting it's because of where I'm grabbing it. Wow, 1.6, perfect, 1.6, perfect, and look at that, I hope, I'm sure you guys can see that, it's beautiful, um, the clean up, I mean this is crappy, but in general it cleaned up, obviously not, not used, not used at all. shine up some of this too, get it so that it's super balanced and cleaned. But boy, is that rewarding. You really love putting new brushes and springs on an armature uh, commutator like that. That's lovely. Now, this, as I pointed out, I hope you can see that, it's actually bent. Oh, my printer is starting, so I'm going to keep an eye on it and make sure it's not up or anything. It took a long time to heat up. I'm using a polycarbonate filament that prints at 290. C. Get your calculators out, kids. What's 290C in Fahrenheit? It's hot. Okay, uh, so we're not even going to look at this. We got a broken wire, which I'm not even sure where the other end is. I guess it's coming in and out of that hole right there. 
So yeah, you could probably pull out a little bit of wire and patch this up and get it going. My concern is well, the low use is beautiful, but this damage is pretty severe, pretty severe. Um, I don't know. I, I'm thinking we're lucky it happened the way it did because that, um, that kept the other side maybe okay. Let's let's see what we got. So we're not worried about that. We're gonna throw it out. All right, send it. Well, yeah, I think Jim can use some of these plates for spares when he makes his conversions. When he makes his conversions, he puts other plates on the end. So this is a little thicker. You can see all the bushings down in there. This is a little thicker. But the magnets are in and it's beautifully done and it's engaged quite well. Uh, so he could use some of these non-bent plates for spacers. Okay, that's a good thing to do. Uh, now look, there is a, looks like a pair. Yeah, a pair of thrust washers were put in here for the depth of this guy, which looks right actually. Let's, let's check it. Okay, printer started. Yeah. Now, if this wasn't bent, let's put it on first. I just want to check the depth and see if it was close. Oh, there it was. It could have been a little thicker, actually. It could have been poked out. No, no, it's dead on. Dead on. Okay, so the shims that we have, the two shims that we have, were perfect for this armature when it was in good condition. What you look for is if, use the good side, is if these edges line up pretty much so that the fields of the armature are in the center of this field here. And, um, and they were, they were really, really nicely lined up. So that's a good thing. Okay, now it's gonna get more messy. used much. It feels loose. Yeah, this is a nice drip pan because it captures the grease and you can actually put more in it and it stays there. I think it's that bad. I think the part that was just loose, and I can show you how we fix that in a few seconds, but I'm not going to deal with that yet. i got to clean it. But as you can see, ah, <laughs> that's supposed to be grease, and it's just like, almost like glue. It's all through there. You have to clean that out. I have my ways. Um, this isn't too bad. I can de we'll deal with it. While we're here, I just heard a noise. I want to make sure everybody's happy over there. Uh, while we're here, I can see the screws for the heater, so let's take it off. Or do we want to take the lid off first? Yeah, maybe we want to take the lid off. No, we don't want to take the lid off. Nah, we'll take this off first, then we'll take the lid off. It's a new spool of plastic. polycarbonate and it's for high strength and high temperature which is what I use in when I print my smokes. Alright, there's the gear. You can get him off. It took me Wow! 
took me a while to learn how to keep this from causing trouble. Gee, my knee. I'm going to work on that. Let's see if I can loosen that up later. My goodness, that's not good. Okay, thank you. Call for lunch. Okay, I guess this is going to be part one. <laughs> that's easy, right? So, we got the chassis down here, and you can see. Look at no. Okay. Crud is just hanging off of this thing. So I'm going to have lunch and come back and we'll start to further disassemble, inspect, and clean 1951-1953 chassis, which looks look at this piston. Yeah, it's a later piston too, so it tells you it's not that molded. This is in really good shape, but it has been damaged and then stored for a very long time. And that's probably why it was dropped. But as I look down here, get a new undamaged field and see what's happened. It, it may very well be bent, which would be sad. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I'll be back. Uh, I'll, I'll post this. You guys can see what's going on. And, uh, and then uh, this will be part one of the 302. Okay, that's how you can uh, find the video. All right.